Hi, Gina. Good, Good afternoon. Week. Yep. Hi, are. everyone. Uh, thank you for watching our Facebook page. I'm Gina Latuka here at the SPCA serving Erie County and the Harlem Road in West Seneca. Uh, I'm here with Ann Rose, who is currently one of our kitties up for adoption, seven years old. Uh, very active, as you <laughs> see. It's kind of hard to keep them down. This is what you're going to have in your home if you come in and adopt Ambrose. Uh, we thought we would do a quick video and just talk about some of the updates going on here at the SPCA serving Erie County. A lot of people have been calling about what we're doing regarding animal intake, animal adoptions, what's happening with cruelty investigations, and that information, as you can imagine, is changing by the hour. I can't even say by the day because it's changing by the hour. So I thought I would run through our list of services that people are accustomed to and talk about the latest thing happening here at the SPCA Serving Erie County. Uh, one of the biggest things, though, that happened overnight, uh, animal shelters in New York State were added to the essential businesses list. That doesn't mean that every single service we offer is essential, mm -hmm. but when it comes to certain forms of animal intake, certain forms of animal rescue, that's been added to the essential businesses list. We're kind of happy about that. We're very happy about that <laughs> because that gives us some leeway as far as what we can do, how many people we can have present, and uh, all while keeping as many people as we can safe and protected from this, this virus. So I'm going to go through some of the programs. Again, all of this is the status of the SPCA's response right now. By the end of the day, this could change. It looks like we're in good shape with the information I'm going to give you through the weekend. But make sure you keep checking our website. That's yourspca.org slash COVID response, C-O-V-I-D response, because that's where I'm making all the updates and all of the changes. Okay. First of all, animal adoptions. As you may have heard, adoption fees have been waived in an effort to find more of these animals loving responsible homes. It doesn't mean that we have loosened our adoption guidelines. It doesn't mean that we've uh, decided we're not going to do adoption interviews anymore. It just means that we are really trying to uh, help place more of these animals in loving homes. So we've waived our adoption fees. However, adoptions are not browsing. You need to make an appointment to come in and adopt. We started by saying if you were interested in a specific pet, you mm -hmm. could make an appointment to come and adopt. And then we thought, no, we're kind of contradicting what we're always telling people that you might come in and fall in love with the least likely animals. So if you're thinking that this might be a time to bring your uh, somewhat stress-free home and animal, make an appointment. You can make that appointment by calling 716-875-7360, extension 207. That will get you through to our adoption appointment hotline. And if nobody answers, leave a message. We're getting back to everyone who'd like to adopt a pet. All of the available animals you'll see pictured at yourspca.org. At this moment, we don't have any dogs. A lot of people are questioning us, what about all the dogs? Right now, we don't have any dogs available for adoption, but that can change at any moment. Lots of cats. We've got a chicken. We've got uh, a couple reptiles. We've got a couple bunnies, so a lot of other animals available. Animal admissions. Right now, we can't admit just any animal. Right now, we are admitting only extremely sick or injured animals, again, by appointment only. So let me give you that number. You're going to call 875-7360 and press zero to make an appointment. And when we are able to call you back, our counselor will talk to you a little bit about what the nature of the illness is. Is the animal injured? What kind of injury is it? Because we need to do our best to determine that that is a sick or an injured animal appointment only. Again, at this time, we can only admit sick or injured animals. That's the same for uh, end-of-life services. We do provide euthanasia as a service to community members who have nowhere to turn. We are well aware that a lot of clinics had to either shut completely down or reduce their hours drastically. End-of-life services and euthanasia is something we do want to keep offering to this community if your animal has reached the end of, of life. So give us a call, 875-7360, press zero, and we will try to get that appointment made for you as soon as possible. Right now, animal cruelty investigations are running the same. What we have asked is that 
if you are calling about an animal rescue or if you need one of our officers to visit your home because of some kind of an emergency, an animal rescue emergency, make sure you tell us on the phone that somebody in your home might be exhibiting some symptoms of coronavirus or even just exhibiting symptoms of the flu. That doesn't mean we're not going to respond to you. It means that our officers will be aware that someone in your home is experiencing this or possibly experiencing this and they will come prepared. They will come dressed appropriately, outfitted appropriately, with masks, with gloves. Again, it doesn't mean that we won't respond. Just let us know that someone in your home might be exhibiting some symptoms and then we'll be prepared. So that's what we're doing as far as cruelty investigations and animal emergencies. Uh, those wishing to make donations, uh, of course, you know, we are going to be facing a very difficult future funding wise as many other agencies in our community. We're asking that people still donate online, through the mail, maybe over the telephone. Um, people who have donated sheets and towels and uh, newspapers and paper bags, we will eventually be taking all of that stuff again. We can't accept those items right now, but we will eventually be accepting those items again. So if you can hold on to them just a little longer, just a little longer, and we'll let you know when we can take those items again. Our educational farm, I know a lot of the kids are home now. Um, we are not encouraging people come to visit our farm. So we have closed the educational farm. We do have some farm animals available for adoption, however, and people can call. Let me give you the number. If you are looking to bring a farm animal home, that would help us on the educational farm. Let me give you that number. Call 875-7360. Two different extensions you can call, extension 212 or 215. And by doing that, you can make an appointment to meet the animals. I want to stress the fact that when you do come in, when you make an appointment to come in, please don't feel pressured to make that adoption happen, even if you don't feel it's the right adoption. Don't think we're going to force you to go <laughs> home with one of the animals. People have asked that. If you come in, the animal you wanted to meet wasn't quite the animal for you, don't feel like that adoption has to happen because you've made the appointment and we've gone to the trouble to schedule the appointment. <laughs> if it's not the right match, don't worry about it. It's not the right match for everybody. All field trips, tours, other group visits, all of those have been canceled. You probably already heard that from whoever the administrator is who put the visit together. If you haven't, please know all field trips, tours, other group visits have been canceled. The Petit right now is closed to the general public. We are open, however, if you have made an adoption appointment, you decided to adopt that animal, you want to get some supplies, we are open to the people who are here on the grounds. But to the general public right now, that Lipsy Clinic is closed. Uh, I'm sorry, the Petit is closed, but the Lipsy Clinic as well is closed to the general public at this time. No new appointments are being made. If you are an existing client of the Lipsy Clinic, you may have already been called. If you haven't, you will be called. We know that there are some animals who will still need prescriptions, some animals who will still need medications. We are working in the Lipsy Clinic with our existing clients at this time. And again, you will be called if you haven't been called already as far as new appointments or as far as being open to the general public for emergencies in the Lipsy Clinic. Right now, we are closed to the public at this time. Summer camp. A lot of people yes. are thinking ahead with their kids to summer camp. Uh, we have not canceled summer camp at this time. A lot of you have been registered. We are not accepting new registrations for summer camp at this time. but. As of today, summer camp has not been canceled. This morning we discussed summer camp and we're thinking of waiting until early April to make that call. We really want to take this day by day. We don't want to be in a situation where we called something and then it turned out later in the summer, hopefully, God willing, that there was a way we could have held summer camp. So we are holding off on making that decision as soon as possible. Uh, I know we're talking about a, a leisure activity and something for kids, but there are a lot of kids in this community who are looking forward to that, a lot of parents who realized how valuable their camp was as far as teaching kids things. So it is an important service. We're holding off on making the call on summer camp. 
As far as our other humane education programs, sadly, we've had to put all of those on hold. That includes Tale for Two, the program where the kids came in and they read to shelter pets, that's on hold. It includes some of the other camps that we were offering. We had some other things in the work with kids. We put all of our other humane education programs on hold at this time. Animal transports. A lot of people follow these videos and they watch when we have uh, trucks come in from Ohio or some of other states, even from some other parts of New York State. We've put animal transports on hold for now, and that's because, and I'm going to get to this in a moment, that's because no one is really certain yet, and no one has come out to say we are 100% sure that animals cannot carry or transmit this virus or uh, this disease. So we've put animal transports on hold to be on the safe side. We won't be bringing any animals in from out of town and as far as in town again we're bringing animals in on a very limited basis we're still trying to help this community's animals so that doesn't mean we won't be bringing any animals in and still our adoption animals the status of these animals can change any moment you might all of a sudden see a dog up for adoption later today and that's an animal we brought in from our community so right now we're just looking to bring in animals from this community animal transports are on hold and volunteering. Here's another place where you guys are amazing. <laughs> a lot of you have said, I'm home, I can help. Do you need people to get into the SPCA? Now I have some time. I can't go into work. I want to help you. Uh, some of you are asking about fostering animals. Can I come in? We can go through an orientation. We're home. We can foster an animal. And to those of you who have asked or to those of you who are thinking of asking, Thank you so much for even thinking of us in the middle of this chaos. Uh, right now, because we're trying to limit the number of people on the grounds, we are not doing any new volunteer orientations. That includes foster orientations. So right now, we're not going to be able to take advantage of your very kind offer. That doesn't mean that uh, by the end of next week or by the end of next month, we are not going to need you desperately. So don't be surprised. Even though we, we can't take you up on that offer now, we might be able to take you up on that offer again, hopefully very soon. Hopefully again, God willing, very soon we'll be able to take you up on that offer. So please, just like you're holding on to the donations of towels, hold on to that offer. We will be taking you up on it, I guarantee. One more department of wildlife. Yeah. Some people are asking about wildlife rehabilitation. What's going on? Are you only working with domestic animals now? No. We are serving Erie County, not just the people, not just the domestic animals or farm animals, but also wildlife. We still are working in uh, the wildlife department to help with animal emergencies or animal rescues. Let me give you those numbers. I hope you had your pen already. I should have warned you about that in the beginning. If you are in a situation where there's a wild animal who you think might need some help, before you do anything, before you touch that animal, before you intervene at all, we're asking that you call us and, and let us help evaluate the situation. If you are calling, this is for Erie County, if you're calling between 8 a.m. and 6 p.m., the number you're going to call is 716-449-0727. If you're calling between 6 p.m. and, yes, midnight, the number you're going to call is 716-449-0363. Uh, 12 a.m. until 8 a.m., we are closed. So you'll want to wait on those phone calls until 8 a.m., anytime 8 a.m. until midnight. Uh, again, all this information is at yourspca.org slash COVID response. Uh, let me talk to you about some of the events that we have had to cancel. When I say cancel, many of these events will be pulled, they, they will be rescheduled. Right now, we don't know when, so we're having some trouble using that word postponed. We decided to just use the word cancel, and when that event is rescheduled, we'll be sure to let you know. We were just talking about wildlife. Tomorrow was one of our favorite events of the year, the Wildlife Baby Shower. In anticipation of all the wild animal babies that we're thinking are going to come this spring, as they do every spring, we've had to cancel the physical on-site wildlife baby shower. 
because that was an event that really brought in a lot of supplies that we needed for the wildlife department, we've decided to make that a virtual event. So we are having a virtual <laughs> wildlife baby shower. That's ongoing. That's happening now. It's happening tomorrow. It's, it's ongoing. Uh, you're still going to go to the same website that we had set up for the, the shower that was supposed to happen tomorrow, which is canceled. That website address is your spca.org slash wildlife baby shower. You will find a list there. That, Bethany, that's an Amazon. Yes, right? it is. Mm -hmm. I should have said this a long time ago. It's our wonderful communications manager, oh. Bethany Clock, who is here doing the video, and she knows all of this even more than I do. No. There, that's all. That's an Amazon wish list, yes. right? You know what? I wish we had gotten you some water, because I just thought, oh my gosh, she must be thirsty right oh, now. <laughs> I can talk for hours, as some of you know. Uh, the wildlife baby shower. Okay, so that's a virtual, that's an Amazon yes. uh -huh. wish list that's going on. Uh, we had an incredible seminar planned for Monday, Understanding Your Cat, by uh, Carrie Munchauer, one of our, our contracted helpers, and uh, that's put on hold for now. We're going to reschedule that. We had a wildlife department information session that some of you had on your calendars. That was scheduled for March 24th. Waiting on that. One of my favorite events, Elvis Forever, by our incredible Western New York Elvis Appreciation Society. That was scheduled in Lancaster for March 28th. Yes, that event has been postponed as well. Mm -hmm. But the folks over at the Elvis uh, Appreciation Society have assured me that event with our amazing Terry Buckwald <laughs> is going to be rescheduled. So sit tight on that one. We'll be rescheduling that for sure. We, uh, we'll be uh, giving you that date hopefully very soon. Wake Up With Wildlife had a wildlife rescue seminar April 8th. That's on hold. I've already talked to you about our school break camps. April 20th, we were going to be doing a seminar on pets and CBD. We thought that was an appropriate date to talk about <laughs> CBD and your pets. Oh my gosh. Uh, April 20th, we put that one on hold. So unfortunately, we've lost that little bit of, of uh, gold with scheduling it on April 20th, but that's going to be rescheduled as well. Those of you who are bringing your kids for preschool, on hold, tail for two we talked about, all of those scout workshops are put on hold. I know a lot of you had that on your children's schedules. New volunteer orientations are on hold, and we are asking that the uh, youth volunteers stay put for now, stay home. All of this is on hold. Doesn't mean that these things are going to be canceled permanently. It just means that they're canceled for now. Yeah. Um, I know this has been very long, but one more quick advisory. This just came out this morning. Uh, we have been working with the World Small Animal Veterinary Association. That is the source we trust. Uh, the Humane Society of the United States has cited them and because we are uh, one of the partner organizations with Humane Society, we're not affiliated with them in any way, but we work closely with the Humane Society of the United States. Uh, they have recommended the World Small Animal Veterinary Association. We're getting all of our news from them. People are asking about COVID-19 and their pets. Mm -hmm. And what we're trying to do is keep giving the advisory documents from this association as we are learning about them. This is the latest document that they put out earlier today. Uh, talking about the virus that has actually caused this disease. They, are, they, they started by saying there was no evidence, and then suddenly there was some evidence that the animals could contract the virus. It doesn't necessarily mean that they can spread the disease. Again, it's limited evidence on that. So, they, and they are very cautious to remind us with this sentence that they frequently use. This is a rapidly evolving situation, and information will be updated as it becomes available. But right now, this is the response to, as to whether this uh, virus can infect pets. Currently, there is limited evidence that companion animals can be infected with the virus and no evidence that pet dogs or cats can be a source of infection to other animals or to humans resulting in COVID-19. So that's some good news. Yes. Uh, there is limited evidence that if an animal is uh, interacted with by someone who has been uh, proven to be a, a victim of the disease, uh -huh. let's say that a person, we use this example on, on one of the, our radio stations this morning, someone who does, has been diagnosed positive, kisses an animal and there is some of that virus, something on the animal, can that animal then transmit it to another family member? 
Well, yes, that animal could, much as a plate or a cup or a fork could. So you want to be careful. If you have been diagnosed positive and you have a pet, please limit that interaction with your pet, especially if other people are in the household. Only because, according to this Veterinary Association, we're still not exactly sure how this is going to manifest itself when it comes to our animals. Uh, I, this has been so long, I'm not going to read any more of this, but make sure you go to our website. It's yourspca.org slash COVID response. And that's where you're going to find links to all of this information. This document from today is so new, I haven't even put it up yet, but that'll be going up within the hour. And uh, we are, Bethany and I are working on this information literally around the clock. Uh, 24-7. So uh, we're keeping the information as timely as we can. Bethany, is there anything I should add about donations, how people can go about making donations? I think you really covered it well. We can't take anything in kind right now, but definitely if you'd like to make a donation, the best way is right on our website, yourspca.org. Okay, so yourspca.org is where you're going to find all that information. Thank you. If you have made it to the end of this video, thank you so much for watching the whole thing. And again, we're going to keep you updated as frequently and as often as possible. As long as we can here, the SPCA serving Erie County is going to continue serving the animals and the people of Erie County. Thank you so much, everyone. Thanks, Gina.